When the fantastical vampire world of Stephanie Meyer first came to life on the big screen with 2008's Twilight, audiences clamored into theaters to witness the immortal love story of Bella and Edward. But how long has it been since you last visited Forks? Watching the movie as an adult, there are some interesting details you probably missed the first time around. Hidden Meaning We're kicking things off with that baby deer intro. I'd never given much thought to how I would die, but dying in the place of someone I love seems like a good way to go. At this point, we know nothing about Bella, so if you're like, what? It's okay. So was Stephanie Meyer. The author admits that this hunting-themed passage was confusing even in the book, saying, "...sometimes things in the story are so clear to me that when I write them, I don't flesh them out or explain them well enough. So to clear it all up, James is the hunter. In that moment, this is how Bella thinks of him." That guy from that thing. Shortly after Bella arrives in Forks, her dad's best friend and his son show up with a truck they restored for Bella. The son, of course, is none other than Bella's future imprinter of her child, Jacob. Bella's dad introduces Jacob's old man as Billy Black. If that face now looks familiar, it's because the actor who plays Billy, Gil Birmingham, has enjoyed regular roles on a few hit TV shows since Twilight. If you're a House of Cards fan, you'll know him as Daniel Lanigan. If you're a Banshee fan, you know him as George Hunter. And if you're an Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt fan, you know him as Virgil. Bad hair do care. Once you've watched the entire Twilight series, there's no doubt that the most improved player award should go to Jacob's hair. Actor Taylor Lautner explicitly agrees, telling MTV, uh, "...maybe your most important co-star, of course, is gone. The wig." There was hatred between both of us. Um, it did not like me. I, it, I did not like it. Uh, yeah, not, not fond memories. If it weren't for Jacob going through the change, at which point he started sporting a shorter do, he may have been stuck with the wig for the long haul. Apple Motif When Bella first sees the Collins, Rosalie holds an apple in her hand much like the one on the cover of the book. Coincidence? Probably not. Choosing an apple for the book's cover proved to be part of Stephanie Meyer's grand design. The author said, "...the apple on the cover of Twilight represents forbidden fruit. I use the scripture from Genesis because I loved the phrase, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil." Isn't this exactly what Bella ends up with? Real Awkward it's easy to look back on Edward and Bella's entire love story with starry eyes, but let's be real. That first convo they shared in the lab was a disaster. Stewart told MTV she felt the awkwardness, too, saying, "...that moment really informs a lot. When they sit and they try to talk to each other in the bio lab, it's, like, impossible. One thing I find interesting about the story is that it's not an easy love." The Cullen Crest you may have spotted it first in the lab on Edward's wrist, but if you look really closely, all of the Cullens wear the insignia in one way or another. So what does it mean? The Cullen family crest was created specifically for the movies by director Catherine Hardwick. Actor Peter Facinelli told MTV, "...this is something that's not in the book, and each one of us carry it. So mine is in a form of a ring, and uh, some of the kids have it on as a bracelet, and some have it as a pendant." k Stu's Colored Contacts Sure, it's extremely noticeable in later movies when Bella has transformed into a vampire and has blood-red eyes. But in this first film, Stuart simply appears to have big, deep brown doe eyes. But in real life, Stuart's eyes are green. Co-star Robert Pattinson confirmed that both he and Stuart had to wear contacts for their respective roles as Edward and Bella, confessing to MTV. She's like, I wear contact lenses. Why are you always complaining about your ones? But as Pattinson pointed out, Stuart changed her tune once she had to swap her standard brown contacts for the vampire eyes version. And so when she finally wore them and then was complaining about them every second of the day. It was kind of satisfying." <laughs> Stephanie Meyer's Cameo During one of Bella's meetups with her dad at the cafe, there's a woman sitting at the counter, but she's not just any random customer. Author Stephanie Meyer was not yet a household name, so it was easy to overlook that the cafe writer was, in fact, Twilight's author. Kellen Lutz, who plays Emmett in the film, told MTV, "...it was a little Hitchcock moment. I love his movies, where he throws himself in there as a small little speck. Meyer did a great job, and I'm sure it's going to be cool for her to see herself in the movie." Thanks for watching. Click the list icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out this other cool stuff we know you'll love, too.